Hey guys, Gary back at the GCNC test bench again. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about latching relays. It comes up often. It's a good feature that you would need. Mike Richards has posted a, a nice schematic, a couple different versions of them in this thread that I'm going to post the video in. Uh, basically, uh, just so you know, all we're talking about is a switch. You know, there's a, here it is, single pole, double, I mean, double pole, double throw switch. We're going to do the same thing with some number of more automation type parts uh, rather than automotive. So uh, let's first start out with the parts of a switch. So normally these automotive type or automation type switches uh, are mom momentary contact. So push to break. Uh, that's a part of it. The type I'm going to use today is actually a dual. It's got two switches. Both are momentary. The switch itself has then an adapter block that goes on it like this. And then our switches, which are normally open version, snaps in. A normally closed version, snaps in. And in this case, uh, just to be fancy, I'm going to put an LED in there. So once that is in, now we're going to look at relays. So the simplest relay is just as this is a single pole double or single pole double throw relay, replaceable parts. Um, the one I'm going to use, there's a this is a six amp version. Then you can move up. This is a 16 amp version. It's still single pole. And the one I'm going to use for an example is a double pole because I may want to use it to switch a higher voltage. So uh, just quickly over, you can see that uh, the coil voltage is here. So this is where the coil voltage is applied. This is an LED indicator. Uh, it also has snubber and quench arc type uh, features in it, but it has a green LED, so you'll be able to see uh, when the relay is active. And over here on this side are the uh, common, normally open and normally closed contacts. And for this example, we're gonna use the common and the normally closed. Now, all of this works perfect for controlling low voltage, but if you want or need to control higher current draws than that or 230 volt I'm using and this is an example of a small contactor so in this small contactor uh, there's the line in the load out one two three so you could control a three-phase motor this is a set of auxiliary normally open contacts and these are the coil connections so no matter which one of these devices you're using all of the connect connections are basically labeled the same. They just are rated differently. So through the magic of a TV cooking shop, we just happen to have one all put together. Uh, these wires here are going up to my 24 volt uh, power supply that I have on the bench. This is the relay that I showed you earlier switch switch has the ability for the led it's all assembled now to talk about the wiring that's coming through so from the 24 volt power 24 volts positive comes in through the normally closed switch and back out and that goes to the input side of the relay or the common terminal it also feeds the normally open switch which goes across and energizes it so if you take a look at these when they're running I can take and push the green button the LED comes on on the switch the LED comes on on the relay and a quick touch of the other one which opens up that circuit and breaks it the latching is done in the circuit by the fact that the green button or the normally open contact will go
go across the terminals of the normally open and common contacts in the relay which energizes the coil once energized the coil holds that in now the reason that you want to use these relay circuits is in case something you're controlling and let's say that it may be some you know some safety type device these are made and latching circuits are used I'm trying to get this to stay here latching circuits are used in case there's an e-stop or a power shortage and I'm going to disconnect the power here it goes off and if the power were to come back on it will not energize so uh, the examples often made that it was a table saw and you're using a latching circuit to control the table saw motor because it, if it goes off you want it to stay off when you're done simply when the operator gets back he pushes the button and activates it again um, hopefully this will help some of you uh, understand a little bit more than maybe this schematic does for this last example I've moved all my wiring over to the contactor instead of the relay so the contactor again this could be used for high voltage higher draws this actually isn't a very large contactor but nonetheless it'll show what's going on so my 24 volt power that comes through the normally closed switch goes to the common of the normally open when that contact is closed it energizes the coil the coil contacts are jumpered by the normally open switch which is on the green button so when I jump the contacts with the power supply on when I go ahead and jump across those contacts it energizes it when I break the contact it releases so back and forth on and off just that simple all the same 